First, we will briefly describe the summary. We have evaluated the accident making use of plant parameters and map since its occurrence last March. This time, we have evaluated the status of the reactor cores. Concerning Unit 1, most of the fuel pellets have fallen to the bottom of the reactor, taking into account the fact that the amount of decay heat was far more than that of the absorbed heat before the start of seawater injection, and the fact that the temperature inside the reactor pressure vessel had been low since the early stage. Concerning Units 2 and 3, we presu presume that the degree of damage to the cores was smaller than the case of Unit 1. Accordingly, that little amount of fuel fell into the bottom of the primary containment vessel, while the most of the fuel has remained inside the PCV, taking into account the fact that the decay heat during the water injection stop at Units 2 to 3 was able to be absorbed by the evaporation of existing water, and the fact that the trend of temperature decrease at the start of water injection via the coarse spray water system, which injects water directly into the inside of the shroud of the reactor. Next, concerning the fuel which fell into the PCV, for Unit 1, assuming that all of the fuel fell into the PCV, we evaluated the progress of erosion of the core concrete reaction between the melted fuel and concrete at the bottom of the PCV, reaching the conclusion that the erosion would be stopped at a depth of approximately 70 centimeters. Therefore, we presume that the core concrete reaction has stopped and that the fuel itself has remained inside the PCV. For Unit 1, we presume that the PCV is filled with water to the level of 30 to 40 centimeters from its bottom, cooling the fuel, while for Unit 3, its water surface is on the level near the equator, same level as the flask part of the PCV. For Unit 2, we pres presume that its water level inside the PCV is not certain, probably between the levels of Units 1 and 3. In conclusion, we have evaluated the status of reactor core damage, whose findings do not change our view regarding our judgment of the cold shutdown status. That is, both the RPV and PCV as a whole have been cooled down. Our evaluation is largely cl classified into three parts. For the first part, we conducted a map analysis heat ba balance evaluation per water injection records, heat balance evaluation per temperature models, and evaluation per measured water levels. For the second part, we evaluated the state inside the primary containment vessel. For units one and two, we conducted an estimation per the gas concentration in the PCV, while for unit one, we conducted an estimation per the reactor cooling water system, as we have measured the radioactivity concentration inside the building. For the third part, we evaluated the current situation using the temperature indicators data of units 1 to 3. First, for the evaluation of the status inside the RPV, the result of unit 1 is shown that the area where the fuels were before the earthquake is covered by a diagonal line in orange. According to the evaluation result using MAP this time, we conclude that most of the fuel melted and fell down within 15 hours after the earthquake. Therefore, the weak portions of the guide ducts of the control rods and neutron measurement ducts were broken, resulting in the dripping of melted fuel down into the inside of the PCV. For Units 2 and 3, because there were periods when RCIC and HPCI operated after the tsunami, the residual heat was further removed. Therefore, uh, like the case of 2, which is analyzed based on this time's finding, and of Unit 1 in the left, we conducted a conservative evaluation assuming that there was no water inside the water system. The conservative evaluation result reveals that most of the fuel melts and shifts downward after approximately 109 hours, and that around half of the fuel would stay at its original position after approximately one week after the quake, with the analysis utilizing the values of the indicator as they are. We presume that the reality falls in between these two cases, though most fuel would stay inside the reactor in the case of one. This slide shows the result of the correlation between the amount of decay heat and the one of removal heat. 
The graph of the calculation of the amount of decay heat shows the decay heat which appears after the automatic safety control rod axeman of the plant in the curved part. The graph reveals that there is a certain amount of heat generation even after a certain period of time. The area painted in red shows the period when water injection was not done for units 1 to 3. We evaluated whether the amount of heat generation during the period is larger than the amount of removal heat. For unit 1, there was decay heat amounting to over 900 gigajoules from March 11th to the evening of March 12th when the water injection was recovered, while the amount of removal heat was approximately 500 gigajoules. The amount of removal heat is composed of the amount of evaporation heat of water, that of the heat necessary to let the structure melt that of the sensible heat and the heat of the fusion of UO2 and that of the sensible heat and the heat of the fusion of zircaloy. If the decay heat is absorbed, it can be said that heat removal has been done. In the opposite case, that would lead to damage to the RPV. For these reasons, we conclude that a significant amount of fuel had damaged the RPV and fell down because the amount of decay heat was twice as much as that of the removal heat for Unit 1. Next, for Units 2 and 3, because the period when water injection was not done was shorter than the case of Unit 1, the amount of decay heat itself was small. The amount of Unit 2 is slightly lower than 250 gigajoules, while the, that of Unit 3 is around 250 gigajoules. The amount is almost the same as the amount of removal heat necessary for the evaporation of water inside the reactor. The total amount of removal heat, adding that of the others, such as Zircaloy's sensible heat and the heat of fusion, the stainless structure's sensible heat and the heat of fusion far exceeds the amount two times over. For these reasons, we conclude that the fuel was damaged, though its degree to the RPV was small because the amount of removal heat surpasses the amount of decay heat. In summary, the above findings tell the difference regarding the water injection records. This shows the status inside the RPV estimated by the heat balance using the temperature evaluation model. It simulates how the injected water absorbs and conducts the heat as shown in the chart. We evaluate that the core exposure ratio in units 2 and 3 would be around 3% and consider that the current water injection is sufficient for cooling.